In this video, we're going to talk about Sudoku ghost numbers and the ambiguity rule, two techniques that are pretty useful in uh, medium and harder puzzles. This is puzzle number 163, a difficult puzzle from, Sudoku, um, from Expert Sudoku by Nikolai Publishing. My name is Harold Nolte, and there are over 160 videos in on this channel about Sudoku and how to do all kinds of techniques to uh, solve Sudoku puzzles. There's also a website, sudokuprimer.com, with techniques and Sudoku patterns and lots of other Sudoku information. I recommend that you go out there and take a look at that. There's also a video index out there on sudokuprimer.com with all the videos on this channel and a list of techniques that you can um, search for in that video index. Well, um, we're going to go through all the numbers 1 through 9 and look for ghost numbers and I'll explain what ghost numbers are and how you how you find them and then how you can use them to to find numbers. So we'll start with 1. One can go anywhere in that box, in box five. Okay, twos. Okay, in box eight here, there's a there's a 2 in this column and a 2 in this row, so for box 8, the 2 can only go in one of these two cells. And since the 2 is within this box and in the same row, we know that the 2 can't be here. And this is what we call ghost 2's. It's um, 2 or more cells where a specific number can go, in this case twos, and they can't go anywhere else in the box. Okay. Now, before we saw these ghost twos here, we saw this two and this two, and thought, okay, a two can go here, here, or here. But with these ghost twos here, it eliminates that as a possibility and constrains the two to the, one of these two cells. Okay, that's what a ghost number is, and that's how you use it. Now, we can't solve any twos here. We can't find any numbers because of that, but that's a good example of how uh, ghost numbers work. Let's continue on. We'll use threes now. Okay, now a three can fit here, here, or here in, in this box, in box two. But because there are ghost threes here, got a three here and a three here, so we have ghost threes here, we know that can't be a three. So one of these has to be a three. So we have three, 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 three. In this box, a three is constrained to column two here. So we know we have a three here and ghost threes here, so the three in box seven has to be in column one, in one of these two, because there's a three here. Okay, so three, 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 three. Okay, now, because a three can only fit in one of these two boxes, and we have ghost threes here, we know that can't be a three, so that solves this three right here. Okay, and we also have ghost threes here and ghost threes here. So these three threes, ghost threes, show that this can't be a three, so we have a three here. All right, we'll move on to fours. Four, four, so four, four, 
four. Four, okay, we have ghost fours here. A four here, so these are fours. One of these is a four. And we can say these are ghost fours also. Okay, so four, four. Now four can fit anywhere there. Okay, fives. Okay, here are ghost fives. But we also know these are ghost fours, so therefore we can promote those ghost fours and fives to four five twins. Twins are a little more powerful than than ghost numbers. And in this case, the four fives um, ghost numbers here become twins. So we have four five here, four five here, so these are four and five right there. So, and with this five here, we know we can solve those. Okay, so now we got a five here, five, five here, because of this five. All right, <clears throat> now I'm going to show you one, uh, an example of the ambiguity rule. There's a write-up about the ambiguity rule at sudokuprimer.com. If you're not familiar with that, um, that rule, it's also sometimes or quite often called unique rectangles or URs. If you're not familiar with unique rectangles or the ambiguity rule, I'd highly recommend you go to sudokuprimer.com and learn more about it because it's a very powerful concept a very powerful technique that can help you find numbers in, ver in very difficult puzzles, much more difficult than this one. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example of this. I'm not going to go into detail about how it works, but there are four or five twins here, and a five has to go here, so that means that neither of these two cells can be a four. Since we have a four here, and these can't be fours, we know that has to be a four. So read up more about that rule. I, I, I can't stress that enough. That is a very powerful um, concept that can help you a lot. Okay, now we can solve these four or five twins here. And we can put the five in there. And you can see how with this ambiguity rule we're able to find four numbers. Let's see, we're on fives. Five, 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 five. Okay, ghost fives here, five there, so one of these is a five. So we can fill in that one. Okay, five, five, five. Okay, now sixes. So we have uh, six in one of those two places. Okay, that's only six we can find, it looks like. So let's go to sevens. Okay, we have ghost sevens here with this seven and this seven. So we know one of these is a seven. So we have six, seven twins there, and we can solve them because of that seven. So now we have seven, 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 seven. Okay. So there's another example of how ghost numbers found that seven there. Then we could fill in the six also. Okay, let's do eights now. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. There are only two numbers missing in this box, and they're 8 and 9, so those are 8s right there. 8, 8. Got an 8 here, so we know these are 8. One of these is an 8 here. So 8, 8, 8. 8, 8, 8, 
eight, eight, eight. Okay, now these were th ghost threes right here, and now we can see that there are ghost eights also. So we have three eight twins right here. So we'll keep those in mind, and with the ghost eights here and an eight here, we know that's an eight right there. Okay. All right, um, and also we have ghost eights here and an eight here, so we know that's an eight. And therefore we know that's a nine, because we got a nine here, ghost nines, so that has to be a nine. And we have eight nine twins there and eight nine twins there. And be, with this 8, we can fill in the 3, 8. We can solve the 3, 8 twins that we have here. All right, now we've only got, well, let's see. Let's go through the 9s here. Got 9. 9 can go anywhere there, anywhere there. 9. 9. Nine can go anywhere here or here. Nine, nine. Okay, we've got, looks like four nine twins right there. We'll keep that in mind. So let, that's a seven then. And we've got a, let's look at these right here. We've got one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. So one, two, and three. There's two and a three there. Now we've only got one missing number here. It's a one. And we've got sixes there, so we know that's a six. All right. Now with this seven, we can fill in some more sevens here. Seven. I'm filling these numbers in sometimes pretty quickly. If you have any questions about how I got a specific number, just leave a comment and I'll try and answer your questions. Okay. All right, so I think we've got all our sevens now. Yeah. Okay. Let's see, we've got eight nines here, so that leaves one, two, one, two there. We can solve those. And two, two. We can fill in that two there. Okay, with these four nine twins here, we have a we have ghost nines here, so that means that's a nine. I think you're beginning to see how powerful the ghost numbers can be. Okay, and then these are one, two, one, two left there. Two, only two numbers in that box. Okay, and that's going to be a one. We've got one, one. Let's see, we've got four, nine here. Four, nine, four, nine, four, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, six there. So we got a one there. Okay, now we're only missing a nine there on this row. All right, now we've got eight nine twins right here, and we've got eight nine twins here. Now. I don't think we need to use it, but you could use the ambiguity rule here. We know that this can't be an 8 or a 9. And we do have a 9 here, so we know that that's an 8, and that's a 9, and therefore that's an 8. So 8, 9, 8. Okay. But without that 9 there, we could kind of use the ambiguity rule here to maybe help us with that. All right, 
now let's see what are we missing here in this column five one two four six two four and six that's a two four four six there's a four and a six so that's a two and that's a four and that's a six And we filled in that 4, so now we can solve the 4 9 twins we had there. And with this 9, we know that's a 9. And then we can fill in the last two numbers in this box. And we know these are 3 and 9. What are missing? One, two, three, three, eight here. There's a three there, so that's an eight, and that's a three. Okay, and then with with this eight, we can fill in the eight nines there and the four nines here, and then we've got. Four five left here. All right, that is it. Um, so with ghost numbers, we were able to solve this puzzle pretty quickly. We also found an example of the ambiguity rule, which is very powerful. Um, so go and study that if you're not familiar with that, and. Uh, you can also find ghost numbers on the Sudoku Primer website under techniques, and you can learn about those also. Well, thank you for watching. I hope that helped you understand ghost numbers better, because they can be very helpful in many puzzles. I'll see you on the next video.